Welcome, crypto fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin technical analysis. We'll also be discussing the German government shift in an additional 3,000 BTC in a single hour as they continue to offload major Bitcoin, hence the current carnage in the markets. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin weakness spurs 441 million where the digital asset inflows. That's right. As well as Japanese public firm MetaPlanet buys yet another 2.5 million worth of the biddies. They now hold 203,734 BTC at an average price bought at around 62 Gs. We'll also be discussing breaking news with a trader predicting a 400% rally, sending the Bitcoin price to 220,000 per coin following this correction. Says the short-term Bitcoin pain could lead to the long-term gain. And speaking of bullishness, we got Jack Dorsey envisioning Bitcoin replacing the US dollar and foresees the Bitcoin price reach $1 million per coin. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this, plus so much more in today's show. Oh my gosh, it's finally almost here. JV is going to talk to us. Crypto news is near. I can't stand away. to the entire crypto fam. Welcome to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. Lots to share with you here today. If you're new to the channel, very important to smash those likes and subscribe to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. Also, hit the repost button over on X, repost this. And if you're on the tube, make sure to turn on all notifications. That way you get notified each and every day when I go live. Today is pod number 1694. I'm your host, JV, and it's July 8th. 2024. Market is currently sitting at 56,000 as far as the Bitcoin price action is concerned. Uh, let's kick it off with our market watch uh, as we do each and every day. So anyways, uh, back where we left off, we can see Coin360 on your screen right now. Bitcoin's currently hovering at around 56,400. In a moment, we'll be looking at some of the live charts. So Bitcoin is correcting it in the red, but some of the other alts are, or some of the alts in general are pumping it in the green, but pretty Pretty modest gains. For example, we have Ether up a half a percent, trading back above 3,000. We have Solana barely in the green, along with XRP and Cardano. And checking out CoinMarketCap.com, the market cap is sitting at 2.06 trillion dollars, with 92 billion worth of volume for the past 24 hours. And uh, we have uh, the Bitcoin dominance at 53 and a half percent, with the Ether dominance at 17.4 percent, and at this time, we have the Bitcoin market cap sitting at 1111, which is 1.1 trillion. Uh, I just love 1111 personally, but 1.1 trillion ultimately. So, I mean, it's a very minuscule market in comparison right now to the total addressable market family, if you know what I'm saying. Shout out LT. I appreciate you joining the HODL gang and supporting the pod. And shout out to Lake the Great. Welcome to the micro strategy. I appreciate all the members here of the channel. So, checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours. We have Celestia up 14%, Say up 8%, Bonk up 8%. Percent and ENS up seven and a half percent. Let me know what particular alts, if any, you're most bullish on for this particular bull family. And checking out the crypto bubbles to get a visual perspective. Let's start in the daily. We do got a good part of the market in the green today. I'd say maybe 65 percent. And zooming out on the monthly, though, it's still Rex City. A lot of carnage. A lot of massive losses from the alts, including Celestia down 35 percent, Ordi down 52 percent, ENA down 52 percent, Stark down 50 percent. And uh, shout out DJ. Wednesday. I appreciate you joining the HODL gang as well, family. Respect. And checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Today, we're rated a 28 in fear. Yesterday, a 29. Last week, a 53. And last month, a 72 in greed. So there you have it, my crypto fam. But what we're going to do next is tap into today's Bitcoin technical analysis. Check out the charts where the price action will likely take us next. So yeah, one moment, family. 
Here we go. So yeah, you can see the Bitcoin price seesaws near 56 G's as the US stocks post fresh all time highs. That's right. Uh, here you're looking at the one hour chart for the bidding. Bitcoin clung to modest gains at the July 8th Wall Street Open as United States equities hit new record highs. Data from TradingView showed a Bitcoin price tug of war over 56,000. Amid heightened volatility, the spot price glided through thin liquidity throughout the weekend, hitting turbulence after the July 7th weekly close before rebounding during the Asia trading session. Crypto markets then declined again, continuing to diverge from risk assets more widely as the S&P 500 and NASDAQ achieved new all-time highs on the day. Quoting QCP Capital, equities and gold have been bouncing higher from the start of last week, but crypto prices have gone the other way. And attention thus focused on the week's upcoming macroeconomic reports and testimony by Jay Powell, chair of the U.S. Fed, uh, quoting uh, Keith Allen here from Material Indicators. Fed Chair Powell's testimony Tuesday and comments on Wednesday are some related legislation could provide the catalyst for the speculators. So be on the lookout tomorrow and Wednesday, family. Like many market participants, Allen struck a highly cautious tone when it came to the biddy, warning that the new macro lows can still easily occur. Quoting them here, the market could test your conviction with a wick to 48 G's. If that happens, a quick recovery back above 50 G's would be critical to prevent a dump to test support at the two-year trend line. Now, Allen also noted that a 40% drawdown from March's 73.8 all-time high was something he had been eyeing since Bitcoin's block subsidy halving, which occurred on the 19th of April. How many of you watched that halving? We ushered it in live here on the stream. Let me know. Uh, quoting Rec Capital here, another analyst, this retrace is not just the deepest in the cycle thus far, but it is officially the second longest retrace of the cycle as well, as you can see here. And shout out to LT. He just hooked it up with a super and wrote, I love the show, going to Puerto Rico to celebrate when the Bitcoin makes the boom and visit my old hometown and maybe JV if he's available. Definitely reach out to me, broski. I just recently uh, linked up with another family member here on the stream, uh, Crypto Surge, and we had a good time. Uh, so definitely, and looking forward to the 100K uh, Fiesta, which is our celebration when Bitcoin Bitcoin strikes that six-figure milestone. You're ready, no fam. Everyone's invited to Puerto Rico to celebrate. Now, anyways, hope lies with the Bitcoin ETFs. Others hope that the U.S. bought Bitcoin ETFs might provide the buyer interest needed to reclaim the higher levels. That's right. These had seen another 143 million of net inflows, which we'll be diving into a little deeper here on the show. It's definitely a good sign when they're eating up all the biddies. Uh, quoting them here, the run-up from 16 to 73 was largely driven by the ETFs following the buy the rumor, buy the news phenomenon. That was according to uh, Sina G, a uh, consultant over at 21 Capital. She also said up to mid-March, the ETF flows were very strong and the market moved up. Since then, ETFs slowed down and bankruptcy outflows that took over, causing a weaker price action all the way down to 56 G's, baby. And there you have it. Now let's look at some of the live charts. Live and in the flesh, this is brought to you by TradingView via Coinbase. We'll start with the one-month chart. Let me switch the scene so you can see it even clearer. You should be able to see that. So yeah, we're currently hovering above uh, 56,400, live and in the flesh. These are live charts brought to you by uh, TradingView via Coinbase. And you can see looking pretty bullish overall in the monthly. Uh, they say when in doubt, just zoom out. And it's looking very pretty right now. I mean, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven consecutive green candles till the recent month. We finally got a red, a little green, a little red, little red. And let's see if we continue uh, with the month of July and flip it into a green candle. We'll soon find out. And uh, zooming in some from the one month, let's check out the one week next. Then we'll check out the one day. Here, looking at the one week chart, looking pretty bullish as well. We have a bullish flag formation breakout, and we do have a target sitting all the way at $119,600. Can you say send it and let's get it? And the other target is around the $92,000 level. So, monthly chart bullish, weekly chart bullish as a mofo. I'm so ready for 120 G's. What about you? And checking out the one day chart family, we're going to zoom in a little more. This is the one day right now. I'm not looking as bullish, clearly. Uh, we did have a significant uh, red candle more recently, as you can see, in an itty-bitty green where we're currently at. So let's see if we can reverse some of this downwards or sideways trading action on the daily. And zooming in a little more, we'll check out the four-hour and then the one-hour. Here's the four-hour chart. 
You, you can see uh, some bearish patterns as well. There's a bearish pennant sitting at around 51,000. And we also have a target all the way to the downside at 44,200. So that would be like worst case scenario, retesting that level. But we'll see if we hold. Uh, you know, again, we're at 56 right now. I think the current low is 53.5. And please do let me know if you think the bottom is currently in or you think we'll go even lower. And checking out the one hour chart, you can see here we do got some uh, a bearish pennant as well, and we do have a target sitting all the way down at roughly forty-three thousand dollars. A lot of sideways trade in action here on the hourly as well. We did have a big green candle, but then we dropped and lost some of that. And uh, let's see if we continue to climb or continue to trade sideways. Time shall tell, family. But there you have it. But anyways, let's continue with the news where we left off uh, regarding the German government dump in the biddies, which has been causing all this carnage uh, in the market. Headline reads, German government shifts additional 3,000 biddies in an hour. And I saw trending earlier, the government sends 5,200 more Bitcoin, worth 300 million to the exchanges. And I'm pretty positive they probably sent more since because uh, they seem to be dumping a lot right now. The German government has transferred over 3,000 biddies since 11, 11 a.m., bringing the total Bitcoin volume moved by the government over the last 24 hours to a five-figure amount. The transactions continue to the Bitcoin sell-off trend set by the German government since June 19th, despite parliamentary members of the German lawmaker and BTC activist Joanna urging it to refrain from doing so. I actually covered that in the show, and I said, what do you think the likelihood of the government actually listening to her? And everyone's like, slim to none precisely. Kotar urged the governments to stop its hasty disposal of state-owned biddies and instead adopt a strategic reserve currency. Pretty brilliant, eh? To shield itself against the risks of the traditional system. However, I think they're colluding with the United States government and they're just looking to drop the price for the big asset managers like the Black Rocks, but I digress. Anyways, in the last 24 hours, the German government has had a total combined inflow and outflow of over 6,000 biddies, more than half of which has been shifted out of the wallet. And the reason I believe this was all an orchestrated attack, uh, you know, colluding between the governments is you had Justin Sun even came out and he said, look, I'm willing to buy billions of dollars worth of the Bitcoin over the counter. So don't crash the market. What are you doing? No, the intention of the government is to crash the market. I think that is crystal clear. What are your thoughts, fam? During the day, the address currently holding 35,000 biddies worth over 2 billion received 4,340 BTC, of which over 3,000 was moved onto the exchange or unknown addresses. And Kotar issued her statement to the German government July 4th, I read it to you, stating that retaining Bitcoin could aid the country in diversifying its treasury assets, promoting innovation and hedging against inflation. The lawmaker described the move to sell off its Bitcoin holdings as not only not sensible, but counterproductive. Yet the government sold a further $172 million later that day. And at the time, the wallet in question held over 42,000 biddies worth 2.4 billion. Both values have now fallen to just over 35,400 BTC and 2 billion respectively. And let's not forget the Mt. Gox selling pressure from the U.S. government. That's why I believe, once again, this is all an orchestrated attack. The recent announcement by the defunct crypto exchange Mt. Gox to begin repaying as Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Debts have further added to the ongoing market sell pressure. The trustee of the Mt. Gox repayment process, Nobuaki, almost sounds like, uh, you know what I mean, uh, Kiyosaki, and almost sounds like also... Um, What's the term I'm looking for? Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, as his last name is Kabayashi, stated in the official release that repayments would begin in accordance with the re rehabilitation plan. And according to the Mt. Gox balance post, the total Bitcoin held by the known address of the trustee was over 94,400 biddies, with over 4,700 of that moved at the time. So again, lots of movement right now and not a good sign when Bitcoin is being sent to the exchanges from the government. It means more than likely they're about to dump it. And again, that's what's been causing the selling pressure in the market. You can thank the United States and German governments collectively. But anyways, let's keep it moving. Uh, we do got a lot of news to share. Next, we're going to be discussing this 441 million worth of inflows uh, from the ETS, which is uh, definitely something bullish in the market. Bitcoin weakness spurs 441 million worth of digital asset inflows. That's right. A new report from CoinShares revealed a market buying opportunity amounting to 441 million in inflows for digital asset investment products in the last week. The July 8th report also highlighted 
highlighted an inflow in Bitcoin amounting to $398 million. According to CoinShares, the weakness of the Bitcoin price alongside activity from the Mt. Gox and sell-in pressure from the German government were the likely causes of investors buying sprees. Inflows were primarily seen in the U.S. with $384 million, followed by Hong Kong with $32 mil, and Switzerland with $24 mil, then Canada with $12 million, whereas Germany saw $23 million in outflows. Last week was a big week for the defunct Japanese crypto exchange Mt. Gox on July 5th, moving 47,000 biddies, worth roughly $2.7 billion at the time, to an unknown wallet address as it began to repay its creditors. On the same day, repayments began in both Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash to select creditors via appointed crypto exchanges as outlined in the Mt. Gox rehabilitation plan. Conditions for repayments, including confirming the validity of the account and accepting the intent to subscribe to the agency receipt agreement by design crypto exchanges. Some analysts have speculated that the majority of the former Mt. Gox creditors can sell their Bitcoin as its value has increased by over 8,500% since the exchange's demise. And during the same week, the German government moved 3,000 bitty worth 172 million, which we just discussed. The CoinShares report also highlighted the Bitcoin inflows, which amounted to roughly 400 million, representing roughly 90% of the total inflows, with investors eyeing a broader set of altcoins. Solana hit 16 million of inflows for the past week, making it the best performing alt with 57 million year to date. Meanwhile, Ethereum saw 10 million in inflows and the top ETF analysts are anticipating the Ethereum spot ETF to go live with the green light sometime this month. Of July. Also in the past week, the Sentinel Action Fund doubled Solana donations to a pro crypto political action committee, which supports four pro crypto United States Senate candidates. So there you have it, yo. Uh, there you have it. There's the latest with the inflows from the ETS family. Anyways, we discussed the latest with the inflows. Now here's the latest uh, via this Japanese public firm, MetaPlanet, buying yet another two and a half million worth of Bitcoin. This is like the Japanese version of MicroStrategy family. MetaPlanet, the publicly listed investment and consulting firm in Japan, is increasing its Bitcoin investment despite a drop at the Bitcoin price by injecting additional capital into buying the crypto. MetaPlanet took to X July 7th to officially announce another Bitcoin purchase of 42,400 bitties for 400 million Japanese yen. Calm down. It's only two and a half million USD family, but nonetheless, after completing the purchase, MetaPlanet now holds a whopping 203,000 Bitcoin. Bada boom, bada bing. Bought at an average price of around 10 million yen, which is 62,000 USD per coin. The average purchase price is about 7% higher than the price of Bitcoin at this current time. Now, wow, MicroStrategy has like probably 330,000-ish ballpark. So they already have almost as much as MicroStrategy. And they just started stacking the biddies. MetaPlanet made a historic entrance into Bitcoin in April of 2024, around the time of the halving, adopting Bitcoin as a treasury asset and buying its first batch of Bitcoin for six and a half milli. And announcing the news April 8th, MetaPlanet mentioned that the company's decision to move the Bitcoin was backed by prominent industry individuals like Morgan Creek Capital founder Mark Yusko, Ordi Swap founding member Jack Liu, as well as companies like Sora Ventures and UTXO management. MetaPlanet became referred to as the Asian's micro strategy or Asia's micro strategy as the company's aggressive Bitcoin buying resembles micro strategies move back in uh, 2020 when micro strategy was the first publicly traded company to put the biddy on the balance sheet and they've been killing it ever since. I think their average buy-in price was 35000 So you already know MicroStrategy is billions and billions of dollars in unrealized profits. But anyways, MetaPlanet's move into Bitcoin has greatly impacted the company's market momentum. Now they got the support of all the Bitcoiners. Smart move. The company's stock price surged 90% a day after the announcement. It goes to show you the blueprint. Uh, other publicly traded companies should do the same. You're going to get the support of all the Bitcoin community. Maybe your stock can potentially jump 90% within 24 hours as well. Why not? However, MetaPlanet shares tumbled amid the significant drop of the Bitcoin price. After peaking at 107 yen, which is 66 cents on June 11th, MetaPlanet stock declined 25% amid the Bitcoin dropping from 70,000 to below 60. And according to data from TradingView, the company's stock is now trading at 80 yen, which is 50 cents, which is still 344% higher than the beginning of this year in 2024. Now, back in late June, MetaPlanet announced the plan to issue 1 billion yen, 6.26 million 
billion USD worth of bonds to raise money to buy the biddy. And as previously reported, Sailor's MicroStrategy has also repeatedly announced convertible notes raises in 2024 to invest more into Bitcoin. That's the ultimate game plan, borrow money at virtually 0% interest and just continue to strategically buy Bitcoin as a strategic reserve asset for the company and watch it soar to the moon. We'll see how many other uh, publicly traded companies follow in their footsteps. I mean, here's the official announcement here, the, uh, the progress on disclosure notice concerning the purchase of the biddies. So there you have it, yo. They're going to continue to stack SaaS like there ain't no tomorrow because that's with the smart money does, while the uh, you know the stupid money, uh, those who treat fiat as a store of value, does. You feel me? We still got uh, two more stories to share, but two bullish stories. So this is good. This is where it gets fun. 220,000 target, according to this analyst. And then we'll dive into the latest from Jack uh, predicting a Bitcoin becoming a strate strategic reserve asset in the United States and ultimately reaching $1 million per coin. Then we'll dive into our live Q&A and we'll premiere the new El Salvador Bitcoin music video, which is fire. And I can't wait to share it with you. So here, here we go. Uh, trader predicts 400% Bitcoin rally following the correction, says the short-term Bitcoin pain can lead to the long-term gain. Damn straight. The trader who nailed the May 2021 Bitcoin collapse believes Bitcoin can see more downwards price action before igniting a renewed rally and route to new all-time highs. We're referring to Dave the Wave. Shout out Dave. He shared uh, to his followers on X that Bitcoin may revisit the buy zone of this logarithmic growth curve model before carving a local bottom. Now, the LGC model aims to predict Bitcoin's longer-term cycle lows and highs while filtering out the short-term volatility. And according to the analysts, BTC may be mirroring its early 2017 price action when it witnessed a 40% correction before launching a parabolic surge, uh, quoting him here. A similar 40% drawdown just north of the 0.38 Fibonacci level would see 44,000. With the Bitcoin price back to the trend line and the LGC buy zone. So there you go. Let me know if you think we'll bounce uh, from there. And first and foremost, do you think we'll even crack that low? Let me know. And uh, obviously another 12,000 from where we're at today. Dave, the wave highlights that the deep corrective move will be beneficial for Bitcoin over the long haul. And according to the trader, the drawdown will put Bitcoin in a position to rally by 400% towards his bull market price target of 220,000 by the end of two, uh, 2025. That is short-term Bitcoin pain long-term gain. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that 220,000 bullish price target for the year 2025. The trader highlights the downside volatility as a part of a parcel of a Bitcoin bull market. Quitting them again, Bitcoiners got to take the good with the bad. Still technically in a bull market, though one might be confident of the final victory, there can also be a hammering along the way. So there you go, yay. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree with uh, the analyst. 220,000, 2025. When will we hit that cycle peak? Holla at your boy. Now for our featured story of the day. Jack Dorsey envisions Bitcoin replacing the US dollar. Foresees Bitcoin reaching $1 million per coin. As you can read in this headline right here. So here's the latest with Jack Dorsey. The co-founder of X formerly known as Twitter and CEO of Block, formerly known as Square, has expressed strong views on Bitcoin's potential to replace the US dollar. And there was even an article headlined today with BRICS, Russia, and Iran, and other countries completely moving away from the US dollar. So it's a given family. He explained at a recent event in Italy, shout out Italy, that over time, people will come to recognize the value and the power of the biddy, which he sees as a possible alternative to the US dollar. Uh, quoting Jack Dorsey right here. It's going to take some time, but little by little, people see the value of this system and why it is so powerful and why it could potentially be a complement or replace the US dollar, which rules everything. And it's currently being challenged by the Chinese Yuan. That's right. He explained that the US dollar and the Chinese Yuan are two entities that control the value of your money and you don't elect them. Whereas with Bitcoin, you have a lot more control and you have a lot more free agency around it. Preach. Uh, the block chief exec predicted in May that the Bitcoin price can soar to $1 million 
by 2030. Unfortunately, the prediction is not this year, but in 2030, but it's around the corner. Six more years, family. This prediction is partly driven by the advancements and investments his company, Block, is making in the Bitcoin tech. He emphasized that the decentralized nature of Bitcoin provides a level of free agency that traditional fiat currencies cannot offer. His optimistic outlook reflects a belief that as more people understand and adopt the Biddy, its role in the global financial system will become increasingly significant. However, not everyone agrees with Jack Dorsey's actions. On Saturday, Bruce Fenton, president at Watchdog Capital, criticized Dorsey for enabling widespread censorship. Notably, before the Tesla CEO Elon Musk's takeover, Fenton argued Dorsey's actions, including banning former U.S. President Trump and censoring information. Well, here's the thing. I don't think Jack Dorsey ever had any intention to do that. I think the Democrats and whoever was funding him through advertisements probably forced him to do so. You know how that works. Just keeping it 100, fam, but I digress. Contradicting Bitcoin's values of freedom and decentralization. uh, Conversely, also Pierre Roker of Riot Platforms defended Dorsey, highlighting his positive contributions to Bitcoin. Exactly. The debate underscores tensions that individual influence in Bitcoin's decentralized ecosystem. So there you have it, crypto fam. I'm going to tell you all the reasons I believe genuinely why Bitcoin will hit a million. I don't know if it'll be by 2030. I personally think it'll be sooner by 2029. But here are some of the obvious reasons that come to mind. Unconfiscatable. Every other form of wealth and money can be stolen or taken from you. As simple as a judge's signature on a court order simple as that. You can be sued. It's in your name. Somebody is suing you. They can take it away from you unlawfully because that's how kangaroo court works. And shout out to the Nipponator. Look at that. We got the next buy signal family. Nipponator for the win. Other reasons besides being unconfiscatable, it's perfect money. We've never had perfect money in human history. We actually have perfect savings, which can be used as pristine collateral on any Bitcoin backed bank. And in El Salvador, they're launching a Bitcoin backed bank where you're going to be able to borrow against your biddies. So, yeah, perfect money, finite limited supply has never existed in human history. So, just those two features having 21 million coins that can ever be in existence and having unconfiscatable wealth makes it unparalleled to anything else you can compare it to. And then you start to add the other factors. It's immutable, meaning you can't change the code. No corrupt politician or ruling elite class can change it, including any lizard people. That's a beautiful thing. And also it's borderless. You can travel around with it. There's just so many advantages. What am I missing? I'm sure there's a million other reasons as well. You know what I mean? It secures your data. Very important. I lost in a boat accident. Welcome to the club, Kingston Crypto, YGK. It is what it is. Boom, JV, self-custody, so no one can take it. Great reminder to remove your biddies from the exchanges and learn how to properly custody your BTC. All Bitcoin on the exchanges can be confiscated by corrupt government. And Bitcoin BTC held by custodian Coinbase can be confiscated in the name of national security by a corrupt government as well. So understand that. Uh, Yeah, I caught that, but thanks for making sure I was in the loop. I will do what I do for my side. Cheers, family. The Nipponator indicator for the win, you know how we do. So yeah, I believe $1 million Bitcoin price by the year 2029, and the logic behind it is typically it's the year preceding the halving. We hit the cycle peak. Example, we had a halving in 2012. 2013 was the cycle peak. We had a halving in 2016. 2017, cycle peak. We had a halving in 2020. 2021, cycle peak. We just had a halving April 19th. This year, 2024, the following year, 2025, most likely cycle peak, next having 2028, and most probable scenario, if history is to rhyme, cycle peak in 2029, and that's when I feel realistically we tap a $1 million six-figure Bitcoin price action right around the corner. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree, and I'll let your boy. Uh, Dan Moorhead of Pantera bought Bitcoin at $65 per coin in 2013 with his own funds. Nacho cheese, nacho coins. Jay to that motherfucking F and V, you know, 
Danger Mouse in the building. My wallet blew up on the 4th of July. Oh, another one. Nacho Cheese, Nacho Keys. Thank you, BZ. They can always mine more gold after 21 million Bitcoin is mined. You will never be able to make more. And there's, let's not forget, there's probably five, six million lost and gone forever locked up, which no one will ever be able to access, which takes us down to roughly 15 million biddies that there could ever be in the world. Think about all the billionaires. Think about all the trillionaires, according to Biden. He says there's a thousand trillionaires. He said that in the debate. Clearly, you don't know what he's talking about, but I think realistically, there's closer to 2,500 billionaires, which is probably what he intended to say, but he's too stupid to repeat what he hears in his earpiece. Yeah, I may have an earpiece, but I'm not repeating what I hear. This is specifically for the music, but uh, I digress. Not 21 million Bitcoin, 14.9 million. That's more likely, lesser now for now. Another 1.5 million yet to be mined. Why? 3.6 million permanently lost. Another one point or 1 million locked in original Satoshi S. Satoshi's wallet holds roughly 1.1 million bitty.